But what do you think is significance over the weekend? I think that if you're going to go after Dave Chappelle, one of the top three comedians, him and Chris Rock and maybe yeah. Kevin Hart and Jerry Seinfeld, the top in the country, yeah. we're all open game then. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a sad state of affairs for, for comedy in America because, I mean, nobody, first of all, the woke brigade, if you want to call them that, um, have completely destroyed comedy. Chris Rock, he was just the beginning, right? But, you know, the double standard between Dave Chappelle getting attacked on yeah. stage and Will Smith going up there and slapping him. So I guess if you're going to attack a comedian, you have to be a celebrity and then you get away with it. But the Dave Chappelle thing, listen, that guy, I talked about this yesterday on Outnumbered. He had it coming. The woke brigade is coming out against f- comedians if they don't like what they're joking about. And the reason why the woke brigade has been so upset with Dave Chappelle was because he made some jokes, some trans jokes on his Netflix special. We don't know the exact motive as to why this guy jumped up, but it seems to me that perhaps it's, it's a bit linked. Yeah, I mean, evidently he's an aspiring rapper that wrote a song about Dave Chappelle, was going to do something and he didn't show up or whatever. He seems to be a, 20, a 23-year-old loser who has to live with his brother and neighbors were saying there's a constant arguing. But what about this mindset of a guy that would have a gun but it's not a gun. It's a knife. Right. A fake gun, a replica with a knife attached to I it. I talked to the sheriff, and the sheriff says there's, there's metal detectors at the Hollywood Bowl. How did I not pick that up? I know. It's amazing. Like, they took, they confiscated people's phones, okay? So you weren't allowed to walk in there with cell phones, but right. yet you get in there with a knife. Right. Uh, you know, I mean, Will Smith, he got in there with his fists, and I don't think there's any metal detectors to prevent you from walking in with your hands. But, I mean, this is disgusting. It's absolutely unacceptable. And Dave Chappelle actually had to hire extra security. I don't know if you know about no, this. No, I didn't but know he, 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 There has been an uprising, okay? there's The woke brigade is really upset with him over his jokes, trans jokes. You know, you can make jokes about anybody when you're a comedian. As far as I'm concerned, everything is fair game. They make some fun of themselves. He has self-deprecating humor. That's what comedians do. But, you know, I mean, for him to walk into that place, he had extra security on the stage, fortunately. So that's why they came in from both sides. Right. He, had, he had security on well, both Tyrus, sides. Well, Tyrus, who's my in with the bodyguard community, uh, I, I saw think him he's yesterday. Fox's in. Yep. But he was saying that uh, they would never have gotten to him if he was in charge of security. So well, he, he saw said the, that there wasn't enough. Yeah, I heard him say that yesterday. Even though it's a huge stage. He but thinks he said the that guy there should have been enough. He said that that guy should have never been able to reach him on the stage. You know, no offense. I'm glad Jamie Foxx was there, but the second guy, this, the first guy in can't be your other, your your comedian friend. I know. Right? Unless, I know. I, you know, Jamie Foxx is jumping in there, and I, his explanation was, well, he's very talented. He's a genius. I wanted to protect I him. I love Jamie Foxx, and he is a... I, can I say badass? Uh, well, I just did. Yeah. Um, but no, yeah, he, I mean, Jamie Foxx is awesome, but it's it's pretty pathetic that actually another comedian had to run in and actually got there at around the si- same time as the security guards. Yeah, I was just saying that for us personally, you notice in, in Manhattan especially where everyone's nuts, no matter what your job is, you don't really feel as safe as you used to. No. But I still use the subway. So Do you I, really? Brian, I yes. don't think you should be riding the subway. I tell everybody that I care about so that means that you've just entered my circle of it's a very small circle of people I care that about. That you subway, yeah. Yeah, no, I just know that no. I care about. Oh, that you care but, about. Yeah, huh? Yep, that's right. But I, I honestly don't think that the subway is safe. There is crime that goes on every day. Right. I'm friends with police officers, a lot of NYPD sources, and there is crime every single day. Only half of it gets reported. The stabbings, the murders, those get reported. There are muggings every single day on the subway. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take. Please that. stop. I'm and gonna... you're a freaking on-air personality. Like, who right. do you think you are? You're not Mayor De Blasio and Mike Blue. Bloomberg, do you ride your ride your bike to work too? No, I don't. Like Bloomberg? No, oh, I don't. okay. Yeah, but okay. Uh, did Bloomberg ride? His, well, he did. He, he rode tried, the subway. Well, yes, he rode the subway, but he also, you know, because the city bikes, they they were trying to promote exercise. But I'm just saying for your own safety. I but don't having think it's said safe. that, now when you get out of the car on 48th Street, mm-hmm. uh, Sixth Avenue, yeah, they they meet you at the door and they walk you to the door. I mean, our that's security, how, yeah, our security, yes, yeah. and they like to walk us out too. Right. All right. Uh, on another note, you talk about dangerous. It's Ukraine, right? Yeah. So I'm fascinated by the report yesterday that said the Pentagon cannot quite figure out why the Russian advance is so tepid. Are they running out of ammo? Is it bad leadership? Do they have something else in plan? Do they want to use tactical nukes? They're not going to need the, 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 the force, an intensive force there. Because in the east, they're being pushed out of Kharkiv. Yep. They're suddenly in a major rush to have a corridor to empty that steel mill in Mariupol yep. to maybe take on the fighters that are left. And or there could be a flat out disaster inside. They have no idea what to do. They can't motivate their guys moving forward. 
So this is a very, it's a very trying time there. Yeah, I mean, I don't think Russia had any idea what they were going to be up against. I also don't think that the that um, Vladimir Putin has been actually informed by his generals. I think they're out of fear of how badly they're doing out there. I don't know if he actually knows how badly they're not, do- <laughs> that they're doing. Um, the European Union is proposing that they, you know, put a ban on, on Russian oil. That's, those are the kind of threats that I'm hoping that the, the, the Kremlin finally starts to think maybe maybe this was a mistake but so, so julie this is a, either he's out of his mind and the cancer surgery he's going to have is a brain tumor yeah because the thing he has to finance his war is oil and gas what did he do to bulgaria and poland said yeah i'm cutting you off really you cut me yeah. off so they have quickly been backed up by france the congo and other places algeria and then he said we're going to start uh, revisiting all of europe okay that's how you get money mm-hmm. so italy's going to uh, they have the best relationship with Algeria. They're going to Africa, the UAE. They're going to Saudi Arabia. Uh-huh. They're scrambled. That Germany's doing the same thing. They're down to using instead of 56 percent, down to 34 yep. percent. Okay, we could play a huge role in there. We can create our own pipeline through Europe and have uh, I forgot what they call the LNG facility uh, would be a refinery or somewhere where we can offload the natural gas that we right. have. But once this is done. They'll have China, India, and some markets, but they are going to be. We're going to. If I once I learn to live without you, I'm not going back to you. Yeah. You lost your leverage once you broke up with me. That's they a good broke point. up. Yeah. No, Russia is going to suffer so badly after all of Unless this. Unless I'm missing something. You're absolutely something. right because these countries are going to figure out a way to sustain energy and oil without Russia's help. So when this is all said and done, we're not going to. You're absolutely right. Russia is going to be a nasty ex-boyfriend that we're never going to turn back and look at ever. Right. Uh, with me would be girlfriend. Girlfriend. If I was played yep. out. Uh-huh. Uh, that's not that I would judge. Uh, right. Of right. Course. Just want to play out the scenario <laughs> as if I if it actually happened. Here's Mike Pompeo last night on primetime with me. Uh, talking about what is going on because Pompeo says he's reaching elsewhere for people. Cut 32. Anytime they're able to bring in reinforcements, especially reinforcements like the Wagner Group, to your point, Brian, these are just paid assassins. Um, we dealt with them. We, t- we took a bunch of them out one night in Syria, uh, but they caused trouble in Libya. They caused trouble in Syria. They've caused trouble in lots of places around the world. They're pretty, pretty capable, some of these units, uh, and they are uh, fierce folks working for a paycheck. Uh, the Belarusians will be probably uh, second tier compared to even the Russian military, but numbers matter. And I, my guess is that Vladimir Putin has concluded um, that he's lost a lot of folks and he's looking for uh, uh, more dry wood to throw on the fire. He's just looking for volume to try and reinforce his effort. He is, he is not going to slow down, Brian. His right. efforts are going to be doubled down upon. No, no reason to think otherwise. Yeah, he rolled the Chechnyans into getting Syrian from the Middle East, Syrians from the Middle East. Now, this is because I find fascinating, uh, Julie. Belarus is an ally because what's his name sold his soul to keep his position. But there's only 5% of the Belarus population support Russia in this war. Now they're training the army and the army is going to be told to go into Ukraine. How do you tell a bunch of men, I'm sure there's no women, Mm -hmm. uh, a bunch of men to go invade a country that they don't want to? I mean, a lot of the Russian soldiers don't in fact, support this war either. And right. I mean, there's a lot of nasty ones there too, but there are a lot that don't support this. So, you know, you can only go so far when you're losing a war. And I mean, technically speaking, Russia's not losing because if you look at the number of deaths, there are more Ukrainians that have died than Russians. But nonetheless, this is not a, a war that has been won by a long slide, right? I mean, Putin thought that this war was going to be won in a few days. Yeah. He thought he was going to go in there and within a week, this was going to be done. So now he's realizing he's not only destroying his own country and Ukraine, but he's dragging other countries in it. And when they do go in, mm-hmm. um, if the Chechnyans and the others go in and they don't know what the hell they're doing there, they're going to back out and they're going to turn their backs on Russia too. All they're doing is alienating themselves. I say, you know, keep it up. And, and, and at a p- one point, Russia is going to sink. And lastly, this is Griff Jenkins had a sit down with Vladimir Zelensky. Mm-hmm. And I like this message to end our war talk. Cut 30. Tell me how this ends. Only with victory. We have no way out. Right. And the Donbass, they're actually pushing them back. Can you imagine if yeah. Russia leaves with less than they started, along with the loss of 25,000 men. And we were told that when 25,000 die, it's three to one, they're wounded. Right. So think 75,000 wounded. Yeah. 
and let alone the aura of this big Russian bear being blown up. Right. And to find out that they can't even get tanks that work. Donbass is basically hanging in the balance. And I think that is going to be a critical, you know, point for both. I lied. I have one more point to bring up. Are you in the camp? that is worried about our increasing role there. For example, what came out today is that we are supplying in the intelligence to allow them to kill between 12 and 20 of their generals. Are you of the camp that worries you that we're amping up the level of equipment we're getting there? Because I'm not. I'm fine with it. Mm-hmm. I want. I do want all those. I want Russia diminished and defamed because this will be a problem in four years because they'll use their royal money and build right. themselves up the right way this time. Where do you stand? Okay, so there's... I stand in the middle. So I, I don't believe that U.S. So- soldiers or our military should be on the ground there whatsoever. I, I don't want boots on the ground in Ukraine because that truly could start a World go. War III. Yeah. But I do believe that U.S. should back them up with military. I believe that, you know, if we could have set, sent over some fighter planes, fighter jets over there, I would have gone for that. Absolutely. Um, and then, I, I you know, I also think that. Our support of the war, for example, when um, the Ukrainian president was asking for us for for the European Union uh, to close the airspace over Ukraine, was it the U- Euro- yeah. who was, it was European Union that they were asking to uh, close the airspace? No, uh, Zelensky was asking us. They were asking the United States to yes. to close Europe. Okay, I I know that. Basically, I know that a lot of military officials say that that would have been an act of war on our part. I would have liked to have seen that happen. I I actually was of the mindset that, yes, I think we should close the airspace over Ukraine. But if they had shot one of our planes down, then we're in a war. That's exactly what you didn't want. Right, right. right. So the other thing I would say is that uh, they brought – I don't have the numbers with me, but if you go back at Vietnam and Korea, the Russians put – gave thousands to the North Koreans Mm -hmm. of planes and tanks. right. Same thing with the North Vietnam. Without it, we don't win. They made right. it very blatant. They were training in Russia. Come right across. Training in Russia. Go over to Vietnam. And that's the reason why we're gummed up there. Yeah, we protested, but they dealt with it. Yeah. And maybe they got what they wanted. We There was no, there is no South Vietnam, and but there is a South Korea. Uh, listen, uh, Julie's going to stick around. Julie's also going to be on the weekend show uh, on uh, One Nation. Yep. You can't back out now. Oh, I, on, of course. I'm staying in town just for you. Because I live two hours away. You do this live two. Just to, no, I really do. You do. Yeah, no, uh, I'm I'm staying overnight in New York City, so uh, I can join you. I'm tomorrow. excited. She's a boater with a tan. and it's a, it's I a, was just in Miami, so that's oh, why I'm so dark. You cheated on us here in New York. I'm sorry. Understand. Yeah, I had to. I, Miami Beach is like my place now. I, love I understand. It. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.